Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman and welcome to the Meat Church Lake House. This weekend we got something special for you guys. I've got my buddy Michael Letchworth of Sam Jones Barbecue of Aiden, North Carolina. Michael, what are we going to make? So we're going to keep it uh, Eastern North Carolina traditional. We're going to take these center blocks here and make a block pit and we're going to cook a whole hog. Stick around. I thought we would end our hardcore barbecue series going big. This is part nine of that series. Nothing better than to go whole hog. So again, I wanna bring in Michael all the way from Sam Jones Barbecue in North Carolina. Michael, tell me what materials we need to build this pit. All right, so this is super easy. It's super traditional Eastern North Carolina whole hog. What we've got is a big stack of uh, center blocks. We need about 62, 64 of these to build it. Uh, some half inch rebar to lay the hog on. We do that so the skin can expand after we flip it. Um, and then we just need some metal tin roofing, uh, corrugated metal, anything like that will work. Um, and after this video, if you still need any tips, uh, my partner and good friend Sam Jones has a book out. Um, you can get it at Amazon anywhere. And it really goes step by step on how to do this process and throw some traditional sides in also. All right, I guess so we got a 140 pound compact Duroc hog to cook. Let's get to building this pit. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys. So what we have done here is made our makeshift uh, coal production area. A lot of times if you've got like a burn barrel, that will work great. We don't have one here today and we don't have a lot of wood, so we're using lump charcoal in this cook. So what we're gonna do is just pour the coals here, get them hot and kind of start burning and getting things ready. And we're gonna shovel them here and then start cooking the hog. Morning guys, we got this block pit built last night. It's super early in the morning. We're uh, lighting a bed of charcoal, putting wood on it to burn logs down into more coal so that we can get the pit going. Let's go from here to here, from here to there. I think we drank a little too much whiskey last night. All right, let's try to, uh, since we kind of can see where we're sitting as far as the pit goes, let's try to slide it back right here. All right, we ready to put it on? Yeah. Just roll it over. Okay. Now we'll just grab it under and spread it out. All right, guys, so we've got the pig on now. A um, couple of things to note here. The way these legs are turned back is just a product of the way this pig was tied up and received. It's very hard to get that to change now. It's not going to affect anything in the end. So we've got this pig sitting on rebar. We put a extra, couple extra under the hams. And what we're about to do now is um, moisten the skin with some water and we're going to cover it with normal table salt. And what this is going to do is help us in about 12 hours when we go to crisp the skin up. And we're just going for an even light coating of the skin. You're professional. It looks like you own a seasoning business <laughs> with that application. Look at that. It's like 100% perfect coverage. Um, and this style, um, my partner Sam Jones, his family started the Skylight Inn back in 1947. And this is how they've always done things. And one of the key things to the way we do our meat is that we chop our skin up into it. And it provides a nice crispy bit in every mouthful. And so this is how we're gonna get there. Now that we've got the hog salted up, we need to get these coals in on the side, don't we? Yep, 
So we're just gonna keep on putting coals down the side. If we're looking for like a temp indicator, maybe 120, 130, and that's only because the meat will still be rigid enough that we're actually gonna flip this pig over. So we're gonna You're do- talking a, internal temperature before yep, we flip it. Yep, so we're gonna do like half the cook, uh, bone position. down, and then we'll flip it over. Um, so yeah, there's nothing to do now but keep shoveling coals for a few hours. All right, let's get at it. Yep. And so this fireplace is not normally how we would always go about things. We're just trying to be efficient with the number of blocks we had. Um, a burn barrel will work great in this instance. Um, but we're just gonna keep building wood up and shoveling the coals as they kind of get ready and playing with the fire. Let's go. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we always talk time temperature. I know we're gonna be smoking this hog about 250 degrees, but we're not operating with any thermometers today. So what would you recommend everybody watching for that? Yeah, 250 is a goal, a little below or above isn't gonna kill us. If you're a little insecure about trying to keep it up at temp, pop some holes in here and drop some thermometers in, but we're just gonna kind of go by when we get coals. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's late morning here. We put this hog on about 5 a.m. We've been shoveling coals in it every hour or so. It's getting really nice color, so let's check in on it and check the temp. Yeah, so we're about 115, 120 degrees, so it's probably good to go ahead and flip it now. Uh, if we wait much longer, it's gonna get tougher because the pig could just fall apart when we flip it. All right, well, we're gonna get ready to flip. All right. All right, so just to try to make this easier, what we're gonna do is try to slide the hog a little bit closer to us. The only concern we're gonna have is to make sure as we're sliding the hog that we don't pull these bars and then yeah. where everything's in the coals. Um, it might be a little bit, this rod's not being used. It might be a little easier at this point to just throw a block right there. And now we got a little step um, and we'll do this fairly quick. We could have done this a little easier by using chicken wire uh, a, a layer of chicken wire or some kind of fence and then putting another piece on top you squeeze it together and then do a flip um, we're gonna not do that and just kind of keep it really old school and traditional on these brie bars it'll give us more room when we start crisping that skin for it to expand um, so going old school old school let's flip it all right let's grab it up in that spine Ooh. and on three we're gonna slide it, it to us and flip it it's gonna get hot and it's gonna suck and it's gonna probably spill in your leg. One, two, three, and over, 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 over. Here, help me back here. <laughs> well, that flip went off without a hitch. Yeah. We weren't quite on the same page. Well, um, and the position of those legs, how this yeah. hog was frozen, didn't make it real easy to get underneath. Right, but 
it's totally fine. We didn't lose anything. So we'll just keep on cooking it. And at the end, we'll spread some coal underneath of it, crisp the skin, and we'll be golden because all this is going to be pulled out anyhow. All right, a few more hours and we're ready. All right, guys, we've been cooking this hog for about 12 hours. We're in swim trunks because we've been on the lake all day. We got a lake house full of people here ready to eat this hog. Michael, I can't thank you enough for coming down and helping us cook this hog today. Yeah, man, cheers. So the hams are temping between 180 and 185. Michael's actually going to start pulling this half of it to chop the entire thing like he talked about earlier, including the skin to get those crispy bits. We're actually gonna go Eastern North Carolina style on the other half. We're gonna have all our friends gather around this block pit and we're gonna pick the other half. But while he's doing that, I'm kinda, I'm kinda tired of talking. I'm gonna jump in here on this loin. Woo, look at that, man. Look at that right there. Oh man, look at that juicy hog. Tender belly meat. Woo. Dude, it's amazing the simplicity involved in this cook and how super good it tastes. Cooking a whole hog's really forgiving too. Super good, and you know what we're all here for. Yeah, that crispy skin. skin. Mm. We shoveled coals under the hog near the end of the cook to help crisp that skin up. I don't know if you could hear that, but dude, so good. All right, y'all, thanks for joining. As always, we're just trying to inspire y'all to get outside and cook, build yourself a cinder block pit. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Hope you loved our hardcore barbecue series half as much as we did. This has been a ton of fun. We'll see y'all next week. I gotta tell you, the simplicity of smoking a hog seasoned simply with salt and then sauced at the end with a mixture of apple cider vinegar, Texas Pete's hot sauce, and salt and pepper served with coleslaw, unbelievable. <laughs>